Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Burns, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly online event. Yes, we are a webinar. Um, you can call us that. We won't be offended. Um, where we cover anything of interest to librarians, um, any activities or topics that librarians across the country would be um, wanting to hear about. Um, the show is free and open to anyone to watch. And we do the, sesh, the show live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time. But if you're unable to join us on Wednesday mornings, that's fine. You could always go to our website and look at our archives. Um, we have every single show that we've done since the beginning, um, recordings of those along with the PowerPoint slides and any links, websites related to them are all together in the show notes so you can go there. Um, we do a mixture of things here on the show, presentations, interviews, mini training, training sessions, um, book reviews. Um, basically, as I said, if it's library related, we want to have it on the show. Um, we have Nebraska Library Commission staff that sometimes do presentations, and we bring in guest speakers, um, as what we have done um, today. Uh, today we're going to hear about dogs. Unfortunately, we don't have any of the dogs in the show. <laughs> Um, it will just be pictures of them. Um, uh, I saw this presentation first at our um, Nebraska Library Association State Conference last um, fall, and uh, yeah, I was a little sad that they weren't actually didn't actually bring dogs along to 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 show. <laughs> Um, but that's okay. Um, so pause to read. Kearney Public Library has been doing um, a program with bringing um, therapy dogs into the library um, to help the children with their literacy skills. And on the line we have uh, Christine Walsh, who's from the library. Hi, Christine. Hi, Krista. And um, Kim Williams, who is from um, Ther Therapy Dogs Incorporated, um, an organization in Kearney that um, helps them do this. So I will hand over to you guys to go ahead and take it away with your presentation. Sounds good. Thank you, Krista. Cool. Um, Posseri is a program that we've been running at the Kearney Public Library for probably 10 years, maybe so, somewhere in that ballpark. Um, it was started as a cooperative venture between um, the library and Therapy Dogs Incorporated and Good Samaritan Hospital. And since that um, time, Good Samaritan does not have as large a role as it used to, but we certainly have continued the project. And then um, with Therapy Dogs Incorporated and the library, we continue to kind of reinvent what the program looks like as our um, readership and audience changes. But why don't we start by introducing ourselves so you have a little bit of an idea of um, who's here, and I'm sorry there aren't any dogs. They would have been very happy to attend, <laughs> but I'm not sure they would have, you know, they're not very good at speaking online. <laughs> well, my name is Kim Williams, and if you look at the slide, that is my Pembroke Corgi, Penny. I've been a member of Therapy Dogs Incorporated since 2006, and then I became a tester observer in 2008, Tester observers evaluate potential teams to see if they'd be appropriate for working with um, in therapy situations. And then in 2012, I became a board member for Therapy Dogs Incorporated. Penny is now a little bit closer to 11. She's been doing therapy work for eight years, and she's currently mentoring um, in the fall was one new puppy, and now currently is two puppies at home who uh, may or may not have therapy potential. Um, I'm Christine Walsh, and this was um, something, you know how your kids get you into things? Well, my eldest daughter got us into this, and bless her heart for doing that because it's been a fabulous experience. Um, Teddy is a Cavalier King Charles Spaniel. He's about five years old now. Um, we both learned how to be handlers and tested with Teddy so that either one of us could take him to events and we are all um, registered handler dog teams. So if Sarah wasn't available to do something, I could do that. Um, she did it her last couple of years in high school and now she's off to college. So. Um, we don't do as much with Teddy because he also has gone to college with her. And so I am now working on a new puppy at home as well, hoping to get her tested by fall so I can continue um, attending events and you know doing pause to read at the library and the other things that the therapy dogs do. Why let your library go to the dogs? 
why not? I mean, who doesn't love to come in and see dogs at the library? And then to add the bonus of reading to dogs, I mean, it seems like a win-win situation to us. We're obviously a little bit biased, but I think the benefits are wonderful. So on a little more serious side, the reading to the dogs gives the children um, extra practice in reading. And some kids get so nervous at school reading out loud, or even just they aren't comfortable reading in that crowded environment. The dog is an absolutely um, non-judgmental listener. And they can sit and pet those dogs. And as we all know, you know, petting the dogs helps people calm down. They can focus better and practice those reading skills. Um, some kids just love to know that the dogs are there, and so it motivates them to sit and read a book. They might not have wanted to sit down and read a book at all. They go home and read to their own pets after they've come to the library and done pause to read because either they want to finish the story or they think their dog needs to hear the story. Um, sometimes it challenges them to try books that are more difficult than the, what they would normally do. They're willing to take something off the shelf, and since the dog doesn't comment that they mispronounced a word or they can't see all the pictures or whatever it is, um, they'll, they'll give it a shot and um, really try. And then last of all, of course, the research studies have shown that reading fluency can increase after participating in the Reading to Dogs programs, and there are programs across the country. So we are certainly um, one of many continuing to build this connection between the dogs and literacy and the libraries and the registered um, therapy animals. There's a lot of emotional benefits that come along with this. Uh, children do think it's fun. We have families that have been here as long as I have, so since 2006, who are now in college. Uh, one young lady is actually about to graduate. So they have come yearly again and again just to see and read to the dogs. Um, most of the time what we see when children are reading to dogs is that they're comfortable. As Christy said, the dogs aren't judging if a word is mispronounced. They're not correcting. Um, and so they can feel more confident that someone is listening to them without evaluating them as they're doing it. Um, there's a lot of, of research that indicates reducing stress, reducing blood pressure, reducing anxiety. Along with that, petting also helps with motor skills. Uh, so you have the calming and you have the motor skills. Uh, nervous children who are petting can often become less nervous, and pretty soon they're lost in the in the dog and themselves kind of world. Um, reading aloud can be very intimidating, especially for shy children. But they're not as nervous when they're reading to a dog. Um, an example of that is that a child who is now in eighth grade, had never read aloud, not even to his parents. The school had no way of assessing how well he could read aloud. We brought the therapy dogs into the situation, and for the first time, he read aloud. The teachers and parents were, were just thrilled. It was really cool, but he trusted the dog to listen to him. And the bottom line is, Confidence is boost. If you're a struggling reader, it gives you an increased sense of pride. The social benefits um, <laughs> happen a lot, too. Um, we ask that the children take turns reading. They have to wait until uh, the child before them is finished reading. We talk about kindness and empathy when they're petting and cuddling with the dogs. Uh, we practice communication, not just reading um, out loud, but can I pet your dog? Can I, you know, ask questions about your dog? And they interact with us as handlers. Um, they often will sit down and read, and other children will sit down around them and listen to the reader. Um, it's a good way to learn and be educated about how to interact with with animals dogs or cats, um, interacting with them safely and responsibly. Um, the next part is about Therapy Dogs Incorporated. And there are so many reasons to have registered therapy animals in your building. Um, you know, 
we always worry sometimes at libraries about bringing animals in and what are the liability issues and things like this. Therapy Dogs, Inc. takes care of that for us so that um, it's an easier sell sometimes to the administration saying we've already covered our bases. These are animals that are accepted all over. You know, they go to hospitals, they go to special needs centers, schools, nursing homes. So they've already kind of got that card um, punched to say they've got permission for these special access points. So I'll let Kim talk about Therapy Dogs, Inc. Therapy Dogs, Inc. is a, one of the national organizations which means that they provide registration support and insurance for members who are involved in volunteer animal assisted activities. The liability only covers us, liability insurance, when we're participating in volunteer. We can't bring our dogs to school. Having said that, the teams are evaluated. They're judged to be as safe as possible. We know the dogs are healthy. We know the team is good, respectful, polite, educated on the rules. And um, basically, our objective is, is to find that network of individuals who want to share their animals and share it with the community. Uh, TD Inc goes back um, about 23 years or so. Um, their goal is to um, provide people like me that are testers and observers. We evaluate both the handler as well as the dog. And our mission is outreach to bring uh, joy and comfort to the people we visit. Um, it is a, lot, uh, a volunteer position. We don't accept money if we go to talk somewhere, if we appear somewhere, if we're part of the library, or we're part of a care home. It's all volunteer. And our liability is, is pretty good. It's about $5 million. Um, fortunately, we haven't had to use it very often. Um, but it's nice to know for the facilities we visit that we do have it. Can you talk, Kim, just a little bit about just a summary on how you get to be a certified team? Because um, some, we have people that come into the library and they say, oh, can I bring my dog next time you do pause to read? Well, no, you can't just bring your dog. I'm sure you have a really nice dog, but you can't just bring that dog into the building and have it a part of the program. Uh, therapydogs.com, that is the national website. If you are in an area where you don't know someone who participates in uh, therapy work, you can go to our website, and our website will allow you to bring up the state that you're in, and then we'll show you all the tester observers in your state. Once you're contacted um, by a tester observer, then our process is to evaluate both the handler and the dog. Um, there is, uh, we look at the dog, we pull, pull on their tails gently, not hard. Um, we uh, touch their ears, touch their paws, we do everything that um, um, a child or an adult might do, um, so we can know that the dog is non-reactive. Um, we look at uh, uh, animals that are reliable and controllable. We know dogs are dogs. We look for them to be hugged and touched, outgoing and friendly. Um, and we go to several different areas, uh, three places for observations. Uh, to see how they react, how long does it take them to calm down, are they naturally confident in those situations. The flip side of that is we're also looking at the handlers. We want people who have good social skills, who can smile, relax, and be comfortable in the different situations we find ourselves. We want someone who follows instructions. We have rules. Those rules must be followed in order to keep our liability insurance as well as to make us a predictable team when we're in a facility. We want someone who's educated about their dogs. Uh, I might ask them, 
how do you know if your dog is stressed? And they go, oh, our dog is never stressed. Well, we know that's not true. Dogs do become stressed. And we look for signs of knowledge. Um, but what we really look for is the bond between the teams. Does the dog look for the handler to give instruction? Will the dog listen when the handler needs uh, to change directions or to do something different? And is the handler in tune with their dog? Is it a bad day? Is it a good day? Is the dog tired? Is it thirsty? So we really look for that connection between the two teams. Um, an additional part of this is since we, variety, we go to a variety of facilities, um, libraries deal with patron confidentiality. Hospitals, we have to adhere to the HIPAA rules and things like that. So all of the teams that come in are aware of what those different um, requirements are for each facility that we visit. And so just because you saw somebody at the library doesn't really mean that you're supposed to go home and talk about it. Just as, Absolutely. Um, you know, we can't, when someone calls the library and says, I need to know if so-and-so is there, we try to protect that, protect that patron confidentiality. And so the teams are well aware of that. And that also makes it a good fit for the library because it's respected. Most of the time, we don't even know the kids' names. Some of them you get to know just because they've been there for years and you know who they are. But a lot of times, it's just a familiar face. Now, they know our names because we've all got name tags, and the dogs all have name tags. So they get to know who we are. We've also had bookmarks down the road. Um, and so they collect them kind of like trading cards so that they have their favorite dogs and somebody always wants to see Millie or they always want to see Penny. Um, some kids really love the big dogs and some kids really love the little dogs. Um, so they kind of collect those and then they have their favorites that they want to see each time they come in for the program. Anything else there? No, I think that covers okay. it. Okay. So pause at the library. As you see, here's one of our bloodhounds. This is a team of two bloodhounds, Magic and Molly, um, who have been with the program for years. One of them just retired, but the other continues on. Um, but here's how it works at Kearney Public Library. Um, it supports our library mission statement. And as with any library program, that's what you're striving for. You want to be engaged in the community. You want to promote the library and those other things, such as the pursuit of lifelong learning and just the general enjoyment of reading. Um, partnerships within the community are wonderful, and libraries are such a natural place for so many of those to happen. So this partnership between the TD Inc. or other registered therapy teams um, was an easy partnership to sell on both sides. I mean, you have to demonstrate that it's viable, that there's a need, and it supports the mission of the, both organizations. But um, it was pretty easy for us. Now, Good Samaritan Hospital Volunteer Services, not everybody, but most of the teams are also um, registered as volunteers there as well, which means that those dogs that come here for pause to read are also dogs that can go in and visit at the hospital. It gives us some access points that we wouldn't normally have if we just were registered therapy teams. Um, it also, you know, the, li the library likes that too because then you're, you've added another community partner working with Good Samaritan um, Volunteer Services, and that is, it, you just never know where those unexpected um, benefits come from and how you can help each other out throughout the community. Funding, it's a pretty low budget program. So if you're looking to start something, there's not a huge investment from the library. Um, For us, the ahead. bookmarks are provided by um, Good Sands uh, Volunteer Services. So that's at no cost to either the handling team or the library. Another benefit of a community partnership. <laughs> <laughs> um, they're kind of a standard of our summer reading program. They're usually there on kickoff day and visit, I believe, weekly during the summer. That varies from year to year. And then they're always there at the end. So the kids, even if they didn't win a prize at summer reading or whatever it is, they can come pet their favorite dog. So that's um, a good thing. 
talking about funding, a few things that we have done as the programs developed here in Kearney. Um, the bookmarks she mentioned already that Good Sam takes care of, and that's great. Um, it's like I said, they're kind of like trading cards. We have put together baskets of books that each handler um, dog team picks up when they come in at the beginning um, of a session. The dogs come in once a month for a couple of hours, and um, they find a spot in the children's room, and they get a basket of books, and those books sit with them. What we found is the kids spent so much time trying to find a book to read that they didn't ever really get to sit down and read to the dog. So by having a basket with 20, a variety of children's books in it, they could just pick something from the basket, read it to the dog. If they really wanted it, obviously they're welcome to take that home and check it out or read it to the next dog, whatever. But it's kind of helped everybody have smoother transition. Yeah, yeah. Um, we also did bingo cards. We were finding that um, kids weren't always sharing as well as they wanted to, it, as we wanted them to. They would try to monopolize one dog. Well, we wanted to encourage them to explore other dogs and give other kids turns, as Kim talked about earlier. So with the bingo cards, they needed to get some of those checked off, and when they get a bingo on it, then they get a book to take home. So one square might be it's a white dog, another one is a dog that's more than five, one is a fluffy dog, a dog with spots. The bingo cards are not super fancy, but it keeps the kids moving around because they want to see the dogs and they also want to get their bingo so they can pick up that new book. So the library did, um, I believe we started with a grant to get some of those baskets of books and also to get the books that we are giving away to those kids as they complete their bingos. That is something that the library, whether we have grant funding or um, support from our friends or our foundation, we will certainly um, continue that. We're committed to continuing to get books into the hands of those kids. And it's their frequent reader reward. Um, we have it set so whether the, kid, the child is telling the story with a picture book or they're reading a chapter out of the chapter book, there are, are ways for everybody to be successful. So we try to work that in. In addition to the, the volunteers that come in with their dogs, we have um, some of our youth volunteers come in too, and they will walk around and make sure that there are books in the baskets, if we need more bookmarks somewhere, if they need their hand stamp because they wanted to get their paw stamp on their hand for the day. Um, those youth volunteers are really great, and they kind of help um, keep the kids moving too, or if they've got somebody that you know, is looking for a new dog to read, they're watching to see who might be open or who's going to, you know, be available next. Um, it's just nice to have another set of hands um, to be there. So it, um, the, and the kids love it because they also <laughs> want to pet the dogs. Um, Refocusing. Every couple of years, Kim and Shauna Linder, who's our youth services librarian, and I'm sorry I didn't give her credit earlier, but certainly she and another gal, Amy Cook, were um, the ones who really got it started here at Kearney Public Library and um, have sustained. Shauna has been instrumental in sustaining it um, in the library, so much kudos to Shauna for doing that. But Kim and Shauna and I get together every year or so to kind of say what's working, what isn't working, are we still on track with supporting the mission of um, increasing literacy in, in youth? And some of the baskets and the bookmarks and the bingo cards are a result of those conversations to refocus and make sure we it wasn't just a petting zoo, but we were on track with that mission support. Okay. The cool thing about um, being a therapy team is that, boy, we go everywhere. You, you can find us in care homes, the library, uh, the picture that you're looking at right now with a group of college students. Um, we're in the public schools. We go to the children's museum. Uh, hospital visits, cancer center. 
uh, we do a grief camp every year for youth where the dogs are used as an icebreaker when the kids come in to talk about the loss of their loved ones. Uh, we do memory walks for the Alzheimer's. We also do Bark for Life, which is a cancer fundraiser. Um, I always say we're a little bit like uh, vampires. If you ask us in, we're there to stay. Uh, this picture, uh, uh, we participate um, yearly in the Veterans Day Parade. Uh, we go to both hospitals in town, uh, Richard Young Hospital as well as Good Samaritan Hospital. It, and Christy might want to take this one. <laughs> this was kind of, this is one of our success stories, but it also, um, it adds to getting exposure because we, we use this as a really great um, PR tool once we got in. Kearney High School a couple of years ago staged The Wizard of Oz, and Kim and I were drama parents because our kids were involved <laughs> in the production. Well, they were going to use a stuffed dog, and we were very disappointed because we thought we knew exactly who had to be Toto. So after jumping through a lot of hoops with the administration of the school, um, stating in our case that, that a therapy dog would be a really great fit, that they already could deal with the, um, the multitudes of people and things like that, made it easier to sell. So Teddy became Toto, his 15 minutes of fame. <laughs> and there he is with the cast, of course. Now the cast fell in love with him, which was really, <laughs> really fun, and he just took it all in stride and thought it was wonderful. Um, in order to get him into, you know, to have a successful production, we obviously went to rehearsal and Kim and I and my <laughs> daughter Sarah were the handlers behind the scenes making sure he was where he was supposed to be. Um, if he'd not been a therapy dog and if, they, if he had not been out active and paused to read, I don't think that the school would have even entertained the idea of having a live dog in the production. One of the fun things we got, additional fun things we got to do is they did a breakfast for a Breakfast with the Stars. So the cast and crew had breakfast Saturday morning as a fundraiser for the school. The therapy dogs all got to come and they were there to support Teddy, which was great fun, but it also gave us an opportunity to say, hey, you want to see these dogs again? They're, Teddy's not the only one. There are other dogs in this. Come to the library and you can see them once a month and do this. So it was really fun to be able to, um, not only was it fun to do the production, but it was fun to be able to just reach out and say, connect with these animals somewhere else they're not just show puppies. They have other things that they do. Um, these dogs know that they are working. They have a bandana, they have a collar, they have a leash. And when you put those on, those dogs know they are going somewhere that they're on. And it's really, really fun to watch them do that. Now, when Teddy did this, of course, everybody gets a little stage fright. He didn't show it too much, but before that, you know, it's one thing to be in rehearsal. It's another thing to have that curtain go up with an audience, um, you know, with an auditorium full of people. So we all kind of held our breath on opening night when that curtain went up and he made his first entrance. And Dorothy, bless her heart, took him out there and the whole auditorium just, it was this communal oh my goodness, it's a puppy, sort of um, reaction. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, it was, it was really fun. And um, he just did his job, what he was supposed to do, and um, being cute is one of his specialties. <laughs> yeah. uh, it doesn't mean that every therapy dog would be able to tolerate the, the large production, the live audience, the live orchestra, as well as a cast. But it does illustrate that most therapy dogs are very comfortable with groups of people, with meeting strangers, with being a part of 
Dorothy being a part of the Tin Man, um, their patience is extraordinary. I, I, I was looking at the pictures here. I especially like the one in the upper left where um, I guess he was so relaxed he fell asleep on the stage. <laughs> no, I think, yes, he, he did. That, that was closing night. And by the time oh, we had yes. done five performances, the kids are exhausted, and he was too, but they, the kids couldn't sleep on stage. <laughs> Um, so down the road, we hope that maybe these guys will be the next crew that come in, and that those are the our current projects. Kim's is the big fluffy black one here, and she has another one too that isn't in the picture. And then the two on the left um, are a mother daughter crew that have moved into my house since last July, so it's pretty fun. Um, Pasta Reed is one of the staples here at Kearney Public Library. Um, people expect those dogs to show up and be here. We have parents and grandparents who thank us for having this opportunity. Sometimes they plan to come in because they've seen it in our newsletter and things like that. Other times it's just they happen to have the, the grandchildren for the weekend and they stumble into the library at the right time and the dogs are here. Um, but they're always willing, if they come in and they have a little bit of time, everybody is willing to take that time and let those children read to those dogs. And then usually the kids, they especially think that dogs like to read Clifford books, which I think is really smart. So um, it's fun to see the kids go and pick out books that they think the dogs are going to enjoy or a favorite of theirs that they want to share with a special dog. So that part of it is... Um, is really fun. We come every second Saturday of the month to the Kearney Public Library and then we participate during the summer reading program more frequently. Probably the biggest misconception we have are the kids that turn the dog's head to the book and say, okay, he can read now. <laughs> no, no, you get to read to him. <laughs> so it's, it's fun. Um, so I guess it's just, you know, it's one more way that we try to encourage literacy um, in the library. And obviously the dogs are, you know, great ambassadors outside of the library. And so many people make that connection. It's great. Um, you know, it, it just helps build both programs. Um, and we love continuing to support it here. Now, maybe we need to start doing it for the adults, too, and have, you know, coffee and pause or something like that so that we could get the, the adults like to come, that in idea. And come and and visit with the dogs um, as well, because certainly there are adults that have literacy challenges as well, and we have a fairly active literacy council here in Kearney. So maybe that's another avenue that we need to explore is how do we connect those dogs with those adults who are trying to overcome um, literacy challenges. Um, it might just be another tool that we can use to help those lifelong learners um, as well. So our contact information is all here. Please don't hesitate to call or email us. We're happy to answer questions. Um, if you are in Kearney, please stop by the library. We're happy to um, not only give you a tour, but if you're here on that Saturday or if you want to come on that Saturday, give me a call and let me know. And we'll, it's, it's fun to come and observe if you're thinking of starting something like this or participating in it. We would love to have you come and attend and um, see how it all works. I think that's about what we have, Krista. Are there questions? Um, yes, actually, we do have uh, some that have come in. Thank you guys very much, uh, Kim and Christy. This is great. Like I said, I, I specifically attended this session at our state conference last fall and thought it was awesome and great program. And I know lots of libraries, I've, I've heard of other libraries doing this, and um, academic libraries doing this as well um, during um, finals weeks. 
Yes. Um, yes. When the students are stressed out beyond belief, <laughs> um, and they will bring in the dogs, and it's it's not you know a reading thing as this one, but there are therapy dogs that I've heard of places doing from particular organizations, and um, it's just in the meeting room in the back from you know two to four this afternoon. Come in and pet a dog and calm down and relax <laughs> before you have to go and do your papers, final papers, or or tests. We'll be at the University of Nebraska at Kearney, um, actually, the end of mm -hmm. April. Cool. For that yeah. very reason. Great. So we do have some questions that come in. Um, uh, first question is, um, is pre-registration required for um, to do the, to participate in the program? No. It is no. purely drop in. You are welcome to fly. come and stay as long or as short as you like. Mm -hmm. um, we did tweak it a little bit so that the first hour and a half that the dogs are in the library, we really try to make sure that it's reading time to the dogs and kids keep moving through there. The last half hour we kind of relax a little bit and let it be pet your favorite dog time. Mm. So the children don't have to sign up or anything, it's just you say during these at this time it's available, come in and on the fly type thing? Exactly. Okay. Um, and how much time does each child get to spend reading with one of the dogs? You know, it depends on how many kids we have attending from week to week. Um, we we start with about five minutes. Sometimes it's longer than that, and you do really, you know, you hate to cut the kids off, which we don't. Everybody's pretty respectful of how much time somebody needs. If we have 15 dogs and 10 kids, then obviously they get more time. If we've got five dogs and 25 kids, that you know changes up um, because the volunteer, the volunteers bring the dogs in. We don't always have a set number. There's a consistent group of eight that are here for um, pause on a monthly basis, but it all depends on what the volunteers' um, schedules are in the rest of their life as well. Yep, that does make sense. Like the, how popular it is each time is going to um, matter. Um, how do you do promotion for the program? How do you get the word out about it? Um, We've always got it in our newsletter. We have um, bookmarks that we try to stuff in books as people check out to encourage um, people who may be new to the library. I know that Shauna, you know, gives it um, a plug at story time and things like that. When the dogs are out um, doing non-library things, we advertise, talk about it, go with the bookmarks again. Mm -hmm. And if we if we get TV spots, whether it's for Pause to Read or it's another therapy dog, something, we always plug it on the radio and the television locally as well. So all the usual places that you'd uh, promote anything. Do you yeah. reach out <laughs> specifically like into the schools maybe to tell them that this is a program, like uh, partner with them? Schools are a little more challenging. Um, mm -hmm. In the past couple of years, and we've just recently gotten back into the schools, they went through, at least locally, um, a period of time where they did not allow animals. I mean, you couldn't bring an animal for show and tell, and they uh, it was almost a building by building decision whether the administrator wanted to work with you to bring the therapy dogs in for reading in the library or not, and then the district kind of said, no, as a district, we're not going to do this because they were concerned about um, I think pet allergies, not about the behavior yeah. of the animals. It wasn't due to an incident or anything. It mm -hmm. was due to the kids having allergies to pets and everything. These animals have to be groomed, I mean, bath, everything, with at least no more than 24 hours before they visit a facility. So they're cleared to, I mean, they can walk into the hospital. So they're groomed on a regular basis, and they just get used to it. But in terms of, you know, clean, they're, <laughs> they're pretty clean. So mm -hmm. um, there are libraries that um, other members of the group um, in other communities uh, contract with the school where kids who uh, maybe have more of a reading challenge can meet one-on-one -on -one with the therapy team and mm -hmm. get extra credit or extra points. And so that is an idea to consider in your own community. Um, you know, all depending on your school system. Definitely, yeah, because reach out to those kids that specifically need the help. Um, and actually, I'm glad that you mentioned the allergy thing. Nobody had asked that, but that is something I think I remember someone mentioning at the conference that if what if there are people who have allergies, and I remember you mentioning that they clean them as well 
as groomed and well and bathed as well as they possibly can be. <laughs> Yeah. I know some libraries have had issues with if they have library cats as just pets in the library and that some people have taken issue with that and same kind of thing. They're kept out of the public areas sometimes. They figure out how to do it. Right. How to right. deal with and, it. You yeah. know, some of our dogs shed more than others. So we bring, you know, a blanket or a beach towel or something and they sit on that. So at least <laughs> most of the fur is contained. <laughs> Mm -hmm. But that that was why um, the schools, you know, kind of said for a while that isn't going to happen. And that was the other reason we were excited about the Wizard of Oz thing is it was a demonstration to say, hey, we can do this. And, you know, the whole audience and everybody who interacts isn't going to be having massive allergy attacks by being mm -hmm. in proximity. Right. Them. Definitely the best choice for that kind of thing. Okay, we got some more questions that came in. Um, <laughs> do you find, do you guys find it distracting at all to have the dogs and readers out and about in the stacks? Has that been an issue? It really There's, hasn't been an issue. I, I mean, we certainly haven't gotten any complaints. Mm -hmm. For the most part, we we stay in one area so that the the kids know to come to, you know, where we're at. Mm -hmm. Um, but we have an awful lot of adults who just come and observe and, and watch and listen and, and interact in between kids, too. Mm -hmm. And we spread out throughout. We have a, um, we're lucky to have a really nice sized youth area, and so we can spread the animals mm -hmm. out. And if somebody really doesn't want to interact with them, there's certainly other options um, not far away. I think it's similar to any program you have, depending on if it's out in the library, not in a specific room or somewhere, that there's going to be, you, you deal with it in the same way. Exactly. Yes. Uh, yes, there's an event going on over here. Try a different area. Try a different floor. Whatever you can work out. <laughs> or it won't um, be going on. You know, an hour from now it will be over. And if you wish to come back, yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly, yeah. Um, someone else in another library says that they've um, apparently done the same thing, I guess, the way she's talking here. Oh, Alice from Bellevue Public Library. Um, but they've used be bookmarks, but she's looking at making trading cards. And I know you said the kids like to collect the bookmarks. Um, and she's looking at making trading cards featuring a photo of the dog and other facts, such as favorite toy, favorite food, birthday, etc. cetera. Um, have you done anything like this, or is there too much turnaround with the dogs to you know, produce something that's specific to each um, animal? Well, for our program, we've also looked at, at doing that, too. We have a pretty stable group, um, but we do constantly get new people in. Mm. Um, so we haven't exactly gone to it just yet, but it's a fun idea. It gives more information uh, personalized for the dog than bookmarks do. Um, but for us anyway, we have a fairly stable group. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like something we probably need to get going on because we have tossed it around and we just haven't acted on it because um, we had the nice bookmarks and I suppose that didn't push us to go ahead and, and do the trading cards. <laughs> yeah, do something that looks more like a baseball card type thing or something. Yes, exactly. Right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Now, I think you maybe did answer this question when you were talking about just the, the kids from the schools. Um, that she, um, she asked, you mentioned having adults who like to sit and watch and listen as well when the kids are reading to the, animal, to the dogs. Um, has this been a problem when you have kids who maybe are shy or hesitant to read aloud that there are these other you know, strangers out there now watching them read? You know, I don't think it really is. Like Kim mentioned earlier, I, the kids get in that dog book um, zone. Mm -hmm. And really, they don't even, you know, the handler's always sitting right there, but we're just kind of part of the furniture. And I don't think that it really interferes with um, them continuing to read and enjoy their time just with the dog. They get so <laughs> so involved in the dog itself. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And sometimes they are reading pretty softly, but I imagine they would kind of regardless who was there. And I will say that the... The handlers try not to correct. We feel that that's not really our job unless specifically asked. Sometimes the kids will have trouble with a word and, and we'll help them out. Um, but I, our goal, we feel, is to just get them reading at all. Um, so we're, we're not there as, as reading educators, I guess. Um, but yes, we do assist some. Cool. 
Okay. And we do have one comment. Um, Emily, who's our cataloger here at the Library Commission, she's in another office here watching, um, and she says that um, she's seen libraries create catalog records for their therapy dogs so that Ooh. you can see them, that they're in the um, library. And she sent a link that I'm including in the show notes here from uh, um, Harvard Medical School, I believe it is. Oh. Yeah. where um, they have Cooper, the Countway Library Therapy Dog. Countway Library of Medicine is the um, name of the library and has his own little page on their website specifically about the dog and explaining when he'd be there and about what kind of dog he is and everything. <laughs> I love it. I'll so, see if I can work on our catalog. <laughs> there's a lot. You know, people are doing all sorts of, you know, special you things. Help me sell that one, Emily? <laughs> <laughs> So lots of, cool. lots of creative uses, and we're always, you know, um, looking for new ideas, and it's, you know, it's one of those continuing to evolve programs, which mm -hmm. is always fun. And I would say, I mean, we are Therapy Dogs, it's in our title. However, we do mm -hmm. have a cat in the program. Oh. Um, he's, he's not a, a reading cat, he's a little bit older cat, but he does <laughs> go to uh, the care centers in, in the hospital. But there's really no reason if you don't have a good cat out there who would be willing to sit still to consider doing therapy work with them. Yeah, any animal that you can at least vet and see, you know, have someone who knows what they're doing de figure out ahead of time as you, you know, the tester observer person, is exactly. this an animal that can do this kind of thing, yeah. People have been cats into, to, like, nursing homes and stuff, too, along with the dogs I've seen. Yes, that happen. absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We do not um, have any therapy snakes or any therapy no. reptiles. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay with me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, I don't think that would be a positive. <laughs> there would be a very limited group that would want to read to them. Yes, there'd yeah. be a smug. There would be, there'd be certain kids that would love that. Yes. <laughs> um, another suggestion from Al actually a request they've gotten, and, and this is actually really cool. They actually they give out. Um, a free book after several visits um, to the kids if they've done it a certain number of times. And she said someone had asked them if the dogs would autograph the free book, like doing their paw print oh, on it. Love it. And yes. she wants to know how can we do this safely? Is there a special kind of paint or ink we could use to make the paw print? And I know that I, I've gotten, actually, I have, um, I've gotten an item that's been uh, auto autographed, as they call it, um, that you can get. So I know there is things that would be safe, like the non-toxic type paints that kids would use, I would assume, would be um, okay to use for that. But I received a, a movie that was about, that had ferrets in it, and they had the ferret who starred in it pawtograph on the front of it, oh. um, their paw print. <laughs> that's a wonderful idea. I think you could use any, you know, even just a regular uh, non-toxic, stamp pad that you would use with young children in a in a program on the dogs the dogs wash <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? and you make paints of no, things like food water. coloring and water and cornstarch things like that that are all like safe natural nothing you know chemical right the the challenging car i think this would have to be an outside activity for the photographs <laughs> yes. or we could you know we'll take them out in the garage where the bookmobile lives so we have somewhere we can um <clears throat> Getting the get dogs more, to actually uh, um, participate would be the <laughs> possibly. Yeah, well, they you know would get really exuberant. We might have more paw prints that we needed, but you know, <laughs> we could have a lot of fun. That's a, a yeah. wonderful idea. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah. So, have you worked or talked to Alice here at Bellevue before that you guys are doing this? I that don't. Also? I okay. Have well, maybe you guys can check in with each other. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we do have another question that actually came in that um, over the two hours that you have the dogs there, do they take breaks? Do they get breaks from it? or The dogs do, um, it, certain dogs have longer tolerance than others. Hmm. Um, that's part of what I said about, you know, being in tune with your animal. Um, and we just tell the kids, oh, she needs a, a breath of fresh air. So we're going to step outside and they find they go on to another dog or they'll wait patiently for us. Mm -hmm. So we don't take planned breaks. It kind of depends on our animal and the need we see. And then and that's up to the handler <clears throat> to decide. The library doesn't decide that one. Um, right. The yeah. handlers just need to know their animals and if they need to go out for a bit or if they're just done for the day. Mm -hmm. um, those yeah. are Yeah. You know how your animals doing and you can tell. <laughs> Yeah, and you know, just like all the rest of us, some days they are going to sit for hours and fall asleep, and some days, you know, it's half an hour and they just don't want to play anymore. <laughs> it it works, though. Mm. Most of the time, they're just fine to sit there and get petted. Oh, of course, <laughs> yes. They know it's their job. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
As long as you're petting me, I'm good. <laughs> yes. Exactly. It's a yes. tough job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's all the questions we had at the moment. If anybody else does have any other questions, uh, feel free to type them in. We can ask. Oh, there's nice. Is that at your your library or is that somewhere else? Oh, oh. I wish. I wish. <laughs> no, I don't know where this is. Kim found this Pittsburgh, great picture. actually. Okay. Ah, nice. But we think every library should have one of those, too. She's a little bit biased with the corgi there. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Yes. <laughs> Well, it doesn't look like anything else has come in rushing in okay. at the last minute here. I'm um, just a couple of this is very helpful. Thanks so much for your presentation. Oh, um, you're very welcome. Our pleasure. Thank yeah. You. So, um, so thank you everyone for attending. Um, their contact information was up there on that previous slide. So if you do want to get in touch with them, um, you can do it that way. And um, Christy, if you'll send me the PowerPoint, I'll be able to post that up with the show notes. I can do that. And then everyone will have access to that there as well. You can either call, call Kim, blah, Kim, Christy, or Shauna for more information about what they're doing with the program. So thank you guys, Kim and Christy, for this. This is great. I'm glad I got to have you on um, the show here. Like I said, I saw your presentation at our state conference and thought it would be great to share it with other people out and about there, too. Thank you. We're always glad to talk about our PAWS program. Mm -hmm. Now we just have to figure out how to get the dogs to come with us. We'll yes. Have, that's presentation. We'll try yeah. and have live demonstration. Live. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Great. Okay, so I am going to uh, pull back control here to my screen. There we go. Put these out of the way. Okay, so thank you very much for um, speaking and for everyone for attending. Um, that will wrap it up for this morning's show. Um, it has been recorded, so the recording will be available later if you need to watch it again or share it with colleagues who are unable, unable to join us today. Um, I hope you'll join us next week when our topic, sounds very dangerous, is Killing Dewey. Um, Jasmine Dean, who's the director at the Portneuf District Library in uh, Chubbuck, Idaho, is going to be on. They're one of the libraries out there who has gotten rid of Dewey and have switched how they're cataloging and arranging their books, and so she's going to come on the show and talk to us about that. So I hope you register or sign up for that next week. And also, if you are on Facebook, Encompass Live is also on Facebook. We have a Facebook page where you can follow us, like us on Facebook, and you'll get notifications of new shows that are coming up when recordings are available. Um, I always give reminders every Wednesday morning that the new show, whatever the topic is, is about to start. So definitely, if you are a Facebook user, um, follow us there. Um, all of the links for the... Um, Therapy Togs and the Carney Public Library and the Pet Partners I mentioned are in our delicious. I'm going to include that in the show notes later, too. And just want to show you, I did find the page that um, Emily, our cataloger, was talking about. Cooper, the Countway Library Therapy Dog. Here's um, Cooper's page um, on their website. So you can see they have their information there for when he is available, Tuesdays and Thursdays, all day, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Wow. So. Other than that, that wraps it up for our show today. Thank you very much for attending, and we'll see you next week. Bye-bye.